Okay, you have been listening to the latest briefing from the LA County uh, health officials there. Dr. Barbara Ferrer telling us that today she is reporting 11 additional deaths. Um, and uh, nine of those 11 are uh, 65 or older. And of those 65, seven had underlying health conditions. She's telling us the other two of those 11 were younger. They were, one was uh, between the ages of 18 and 41 and the other between the ages of 41 and 65. They did have underlying health conditions. In all, there are 513 new cases announced, and just in the last 48 hours, we're talking about 1,000 additional cases in just 48 hours. Now, remember, a week ago, we were at 800 cases, and so now we're at roughly, it was 799, but now we're at 3518. And one of the things Dr. Ferrer was saying as she continues her remarks in Spanish is that there are a number of people in the community who have this illness. They are asymptomatic. And that means they are having more and more research that is showing you might have the disease, you might have coronavirus, and you will be spreading it to others, thus reiterating the big point that the governor mentioned, that Ferreira is mentioning, every health expert is saying, stay at home, you're safer at home, you don't know who you're going to be passing this to, and at this point she's got more evidence that shows some people don't have symptoms and they have it. That's right. And a good question that someone asked was, can I have, say, my niece come over for dinner? And she made it very clear that no, what they mean when they say stay at home uh, and, and to, um, you know, have physical distancing, they are saying no one else besides who lives in your home should be coming into your home and you shouldn't be visiting anyone else's home. So that's important. They're also talking about ramping up testing. They say they have 21,000 people who've been tested, but that is an under report of the number of people tested because one of the labs that's giving results was uh, throwing out negative results. So they have tested and received results for more than 21,000 people. And at this point, right now, the numbers are showing that about 12 to 13 percent of the people tested have tested positive. But they do think that number is actually a little bit lower because of all the negative tests thrown out. However, it is still a remarkable number when you think of 10 percent of the people who are considered at risk because we're talking about the only people getting tested right now are the people who are showing signs, they're ill, they have some sort of a reason for a doctor to send them to the test facility and 10% of them are testing positive, which uh, one of the interesting things to me is I keep looking at capacity. We have 341 people currently hospitalized and there are 1,438 beds available right now. So right now we're not at capacity. There are all hospitals with beds available. So there are some good things, but then we keep going back to the concern, which is the peak is not coming until mid-May. So we have to look at the continued rate of increase and stay at home. We just have to keep reiterating that. Absolutely. And again, she mentioned that the mortality rate is maintaining at the 1.8% of people who are uh, hospitalized. So we want to give you a breakdown of some of the coronavirus cases by county. We're going to kind of wrap everything up for you here as we approach two o'clock. We're going to return you to regular programming at that point. Uh, we did hear from L.A. County, which now has over 3,000 cases, 3,518 confirmed cases, and sadly, 65 deaths. There are 341 people, as I mentioned, still in the hospital. Orange County is reporting new numbers today with 606 cases and 10 deaths. Riverside County is up to 371 cases. In San Bernardino County, there are 183 cases. And in Ventura County, there are 149 cases. And I do want to point out that the governor mentioned 171 deaths statewide. So 171 deaths statewide. And he said that number is likely higher because of all of these counties starting to report. Right. Now, the outbreak at a Yukaipa nursing home is escalating. We know that two people at the facility have now died after testing positive for COVID-19. 51 residents and six, six staff members at the Cedar Mountain uh, Post-Acute Rehabilitation Center have all tested positive for the virus. Results are still pending for about 20 people at the facility and others still have not been tested. The nursing home now makes up one third of all known cases in San Bernardino County. Also, nearly 40 FEMA trailers have arrived at the Rose Bowl parking lot amid the coronavirus emergency. The city of Pasadena says the RVs will be used for public safety needs at this point. That is consistent with what other cities are receiving. The state is also sending nearly 80 trailers to Orange County to help house homeless people. 
who need to be quarantined away from shelters during the pandemic. We heard in the county there are now five homeless people who have tested positive for the virus. Barbara Ferrer said she did not think at this point any of those five are in the hospital. But 39 of these single occupancy RVs will go to Anaheim and 22 will be in Santa Ana. Elsewhere, the Santa Monica Farmers Market opened today with new physical distancing guidelines during the outbreak. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Cotarobos has details on those plans. They lined up early for the Santa Monica Farmers Market this morning, some wearing masks and gloves amid heightened concerns due to the coronavirus pandemic. They're being strict because they want to stay in business. Prior to opening today, the city of Santa Monica adapted practices to prevent overcrowding while also giving people a chance to sanitize their hands inside the market, among other noticeable necessary changes. I very longingly looked at some strawberries that I wasn't allowed to taste. Everyone's very wary. There's less chatting. <laughs> um, and people being careful about handling money. They could have just given up and said, hey, you know, this is too difficult. Let's just shut it down and send us all to the grocery store. Today, only 200 people can come into the market at a given time. When one person leaves, another can go in, with market organizers asking that only one member of a household come to shop. If you look, there's not um, large crowds of people all around. Everybody's pretty much maintaining a six foot distance. These precautions in Santa Monica come just a couple days after farmers markets in the city of Los Angeles had been ordered to temporarily close. Now several have been given the OK once again to reopen after submitting physical distancing plans of their own. Many of these shoppers believe the opportunity to buy fresh produce and goods should not be taken away. To me, this is more of an essential service than a grocery store. And staying safe while doing so comes down to common sense with these protocols now in place. They're keeping me safe and they're keeping everyone safe right now. So I think they're doing a great job. In Santa Monica, Mark Cotarobles, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Now you might notice some grocery stores are not letting employees use your reusable bags at checkout. That's another step to protect the workers. This comes as the LA County Board of Supervisors approved a motion yesterday. Calls for employers to sanitize and stock bathrooms, clean stores and shopping carts between uses and provide sanitizing stations at the entrance of all stores. The motion also requires employers uh, to provide Let's see here. Uh, physical distancing uh, provides security to enforce physical distancing, establish operating hours to restock, and then provide access to COVID-19 testing. They're considered essential workers, but we need to make sure that they're safe and they're healthy so that when they go home at night, they don't take home this deadly virus. Some Whole Food workers participated in a sick out yesterday in an effort to pressure stores to provide more protections and higher pay. So far, the chain has rolled out new safety measures that include deeper cleaning, crowd control and temperature screenings for employees. It's also temporarily boosted base pay, overtime pay and paid sick leave. New rules for Costco shoppers starting tomorrow. The warehouse will allow no more than two people to enter with each membership card. The temporary change is to help with physical distancing when inside. There is also a special shopping hour now in place for those 60 and over and for people with disabilities. That early opening is from 8 to 9 a.m. Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Disney parks may be closed, but the company is donating one of its most well-known items to help those on the front lines of COVID-19. The company donated 150,000 rain ponchos to MedShare, which is a humanitarian aid organization. The organization will distribute the ponchos to hospitals in desperate need for personal protective equipment. The idea was inspired by nurses across the country who say rain ponchos can protect their clothing and the equipment, which prolongs clothing and equipment's use. Disney is the parent company of ABC7. Coronavirus testing continues to expand in Los Angeles as leaders work to make sure anyone who thinks they might be sick can get tested. Mayor Eric Garcetti says the city has already conducted more than 10,000 tests, 1,600 yesterday alone, and will hit 13,000 by the end of the week. Today, two new testing sites will open to the entire county with more than 3,000 spots available. The mayor is also cracking down on businesses and non-essential construction sites that don't practice physical distancing. We will not be shy about shutting down construction sites that do not comply. So comply, continue the critical work that you are doing, but in the meantime, make sure you are keeping your people and all of us safe. 
The mayor discovered 540 non-essential businesses that had not yet shut down. Most of them complied, but the mayor says the LAPD has visited 144 locations to follow up, and four have been referred to the city for potential charges.